All right. This is the gentleman that you see on screen right now, our guest speaker tonight. I'm not even going to say a name prior to giving the introduction because <laughs> I want to I want to set the full stage here for the greatness that you're in the presence of. <laughs> All right. So to set the stage, I'm going to give you a quote from the book, Nothing That You Don't Already Know. And it states, you slow down your progress by rushing the process. What that means is the main focus, I'm sorry, the more, the more that you focus on the results, the slower your process, your process. Ah. The more that you focus on your process, the faster the results. So to give a little bit of evidence to support that thought, according to credit.com, only 18% of first time entrepreneurs succeed with their first venture and only 30% that have previous failures. And it can even take more than three years to turn up substantial profit when going into business. If we switch our thought process to the workforce, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that the average employment for those 25 to 34 age lasts only less than three years. So a part of developing a successful career is learning to uh, align your purpose, your passion, your principles with the decisions and behaviors and a career. As the age old saying states, the point of life isn't to arrive in the future, but it's to live in the present. Mm. So our guest speaker tonight is going to give you a little bit of insight on purpose, passion, and principles, and how he's aligned decisions, behaviors, and career choices. And maybe add a few proud moments about uh, what was that, the real HU, playing at the real <laughs> HU? Hampton, uh, yes, sir. I think it was Kent State. Kent State. And even some NFL opportunities mm. for trying out. Couple tryouts. Couple tryouts. But that one right there, that one, that picture right there is one of my favorites right there. Winning, winning that state championship with that young man and, the, and a host of others. And that's one of his uh, careers that I'll introduce here in a second as well. Which is former college coach, former director of football operations at the NFL regional combines, a former NCAA administrator. The state championship that he just mentioned is one of several, right? At Carmel High School, where he's currently an assistant coach. And also the senior coordinator of football development at USA Football. Rashad Elby is our guest speaker tonight. And let me touch on those, uh, his role at USA Football a little bit more. So at USA Football is the national governing body of amateur American football in the United States. It's an independent non-profit-based non -profit -based, uh, operation in Indianapolis, Indiana. USA Football hosts more than 100 training events annually. In his role, which he self-described as everything technical and technical within football curriculum and content, he develops this content in order to coach football coaches. So how cool is that, that uh, his everyday job is he gets to develop content about football, the game that he loves and present this to coaches so that they can become more efficient in their operation and, and their coaching methods. So with that said, let me show you a little bit of the work that he does and sharing a video. And then once we watch these few seconds of this video, the next voice that you'll hear as the preacher man says, the next <laughs> voice that you hear <laughs> be that of your guest speaker tonight. Mr. Rashad Elby. Ooh, need a 
haircut. <laughs> it ain't no sound on the video, Miss Lynx. There was no sound? Okay. No. Coach. I send, I can send it to you guys later. I'm ready to get these kids I going. I apologize for that, dear. We'll go ahead and get started then. The next you voice you hear, our guest speaker, Rashad. <laughs> I'll let you take it from here then. <laughs> how y'all doing? Donnie, how you doing, man? Doing good, sir. Good, good, good. You, might, you guys both might as well stay off mute because I'm going to be talking to both y'all, and I want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, I know I don't want to hear myself talk for the next 30 to 45 minutes. I know y'all don't want to hear me talk. So I'm, I am here to help you both and Ivory, who's joining us now. I'm here, I'm, I am here to help the three of y'all. And anything that I can do from my past experiences, I, I just want to try and pour it into you guys to make you guys better young people, better young professionals. And at the end of the day, I really want to prepare you for life in the sports industry if that's something that you want to do, or just however I can just help add to your toolkit if it's a life outside of sport. Make sense? Donnie, yes? Yes, sir. Cash, good? Yes. All right, boom. So I'm gonna kind of freestyle a little bit. I had a script that I, was, that I had prepared, you know, because I, I thought there'd be more people, but since it's just the two or three of us, I'm just gonna jump right in and come to you guys right away. Um, Ms. Johnson, tell me a little bit about what you are currently doing and short and long-term goals. Uh, like what I'm currently doing as far as a job right now? Just whatever, whatever you want to share with me about yourself. And yeah, let's, let's start to intertwine the career into that because I think that's, that's really what we're here to talk about is, is your careers and, and the short and long-term goals. Hey, Rashad, if I can interject really quick. We, uh, we just did an assignment not too long ago called an elevator pitch. So, Beautiful. Oh, no. So, Cash, Spit this it. is your opportunity. Spit it. Spit, <laughs> it. Spit it. I want to hear all of them. <laughs> now, okay, let me jump in real quick, if you don't mind. While you guys are trying to remember what your elevator pitch is, okay, let me tell you, I am 42 years old, okay? I did not learn what an elevator pitch was until I was 30, okay? You guys are what, in your 20, 21 maybe? So you guys, you guys are ahead of the game. So the fact that you know what an elevator pitch is already, you're doing a lot better than I was doing at your age. Trust and believe. So I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm only here to help sharpen your, your, your tools and your toolkit. And it's awesome. Ms. Johnson, how are you? Nice to meet time. you. It's nice to meet you too, Mr. Abby. Yeah. So, so tell me about yourself. Uh, my name is Ashley Johnson. I'm a rising, well, not a rising dream, but I'm a junior at uh, Warhees. I play basketball. Okay. I'm also a member of the Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. SG Rho. Yep. Yes, sir. My short-term goals are... Uh, I say to reach a thousand career points in basketball and um, to finish out the school year with all A's. Long term. Phenomenal. My long term career goals, or just goals in general. Um, so I wanna, I wanna be a um, pro skills trainer. So okay. I wanna enhance like athletes on their skills and their abilities. So I wanna open up like my own youth center and then also like train and you know like give counseling to the students and athletes and everything that come through. So beautiful. That's that. Beautiful. Donnie, you're up next. Before you go, Ivory, can you can you unmute yourself, please? Hello. I'm sorry. My son is crying right now. So. Oh, okay. No worries. <laughs> you can go. You can, if, if it leave yeah, you, you can go to Yeah, I don't want to disrupt. Donnie, you're up, bud. Yes, sir. It's nice to meet you, Donnie. Like, uh, Tell me about yourself. Nice Meet you too, sir. My name's uh, my full name is Donald J. Lauer the Fourth. I'm currently a junior of Voorhees College. Um, I am doing schoolwork, but you know, stuck at home with the coronavirus, so uh, dealing with that as best as I can. 
Um, I am a member of Five Year Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. I am a member of the baseball team. Uh, I also right. work on campus as the IT intern and a student tutor. Great. Well, you guys both have phenomenal backgrounds, and you're you're ahead of me when I was your age. Um, the thing is, what I what I want you guys to first think, start thinking about is as you start to move along going into your careers and your career progression, you have to start thinking about being extremely intentional with how you move, okay? So, so I was gonna say Ashley. What's your, how do you say your, what's your first name? Is it Ashley? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, Ashley, okay. So Ashley, so your long, your long term is to be a skills trainer, mm -hmm. yes? Yes. So, so you need to start thinking about, okay, Right now, short term, it sounds like I want to score a thousand points. And then I'm assuming that you have some sort of aspirations to play basketball beyond college. So, yes. okay, so once also, once the dust settles and all of that happens or doesn't happen, what's your next step? Because you don't want to be one of those athletes that now hits the ground running, but you don't know where you're running to. You have no plan. You know what I mean? And Don, you want to kind of, and Don, you want to kind of figure out what is what is my move going to be right now? I'm playing baseball. You might want to pursue baseball also beyond college. But what is that? What is that next move going to look like for me? And being intentional in that is half the battle. Being intentional in how you move in my in my um, I, I think it's everything. You have to be intentional. So I know if I want to be a skills coach. It, it really isn't going to help me if I go and get a job down the street at Kroger, you know what I mean, at the local grocery store. So you want to start investing in yourself and networking with those people who are currently where you want to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Donnie, what, yes, Donnie, what was your, what was your long-term? Uh, I didn't state my long-term because it would kind of take a minute to explain, but right now I'm currently trying to become a Naval officer in the United States Navy. And I'm okay. trying to get into the hard program that is possible for someone in college. You said, it broke up. You said the hardest program? Yes, sir. It's called the NUPOC program. I'm basically trying okay. to become a nuclear powered operator, but then as an officer on submarines in the Navy once I graduate. Phenomenal. That's great. That, that's, that's incredible stuff. Um, so again, how are you guys getting to where you want to get to is what you should be thinking about. How am I going to get there? What is that next step going to look like? Does that make sense? So yes, sir. I'm, I'm assuming yes or no, you guys both and, and e even Ivory yourself, you guys have LinkedIn profiles. Mm -hmm. They should. That yes, was another okay. one of our assignments. Yes, <laughs> okay. Are we, are we active on LinkedIn? No. Okay. I mean, I am. Maybe not as active as I should be. Okay. Body. Yeah, I do a little looking on there. Okay. So what I what I would suggest to you guys is find those folks who are doing what it is you want to do on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a phenomenal resource to use. So what I always tell people is, as you find those people, obviously go and add them. Okay, add those folks. And then send up an email. Hey, my name's Donnie. You know, I'm a junior at Warriors College. You know, tell them a little bit about yourself, like, you know, your elevator pitch. And then let them know, hey, I would like to set up a time if I could steal maybe 10 to 15 minutes of your time to talk about your career, your role at Company X, and how you got there. A lot, people love to brag on themselves. People love to talk about how great they are and what they've done. So nine times i'll say maybe eight times out of ten you'll get a response from people and they'll set aside 10 or 15 minutes for you and they'll help walk you through that process of how they got to where they are but for you it's about cultivating that relationship that does that make sense so you're building that relationship mm -hmm. if i can if i can yes, also sir. add a point that that's uh that's one of the assignments as well an ongoing assignment that uh, those that are participating have been doing that. They've been adding companies each week that they're uh, interested in and at least two individuals that are within the field for the uh, company that they're interested in working at. So they should be doing that Good. each week as well. 
Good. So, so you guys, you guys should be moving the needle a little bit. Then I would just, I would just start reaching out to people. Um, and then, you know, as you're reaching out, your approach is, is probably going to be more than half the battle. So when you approach people, just like I'm doing today, I, I have a jacket on, I have, I have a button up on because I want to make sure I give off a good impression to all of you. I'm always going to present myself with the best possible or give you the best possible version of Rashad whenever I meet you, especially for the first time. You know, so as you begin to set up these, these meetings, these phone calls, whether it's via telephone, whether it's via Zoom, whether it's Teams, make sure when you have these meetings that you're, that you're dressed accordingly and dressed appropriately. Those, those one-on-ones are, are very important. But then once you have those one-on-ones, don't think that your job is then done because after you have those, you always want to send a follow-up email thanking them for their time. But then it's also a matter of how do I continue to cultivate this relationship? Because one phone call does not mean that you are, you're now in this person's network. But now you have to find a way, it's now on you to continue to cultivate and develop this relationship. So as you, you, know, you see things that they're posting on LinkedIn, comment on what they're doing on LinkedIn. Send them a text like, hey, you know, Donnie, I saw you went two for three and had the game winning RBI. Great job in your game. You know, Cash, I saw you, I saw you at you know, 995 points and you need five more. You know, you're almost there. Keep working. I'll congratulate you after you get those next six points when you get to a thousand points. So, finding the little ways to stay connected is always going to be a great benefit for you, also, and help to develop that relationship long term. So it's not just that one-time engagement. Make sense? Yes. Yes, sir. That's actually a great yes. point because I I actually met Rashad. How long ago was that, Rashad? It was man. I want to say 2011. If I had to guess. So almost 10 years ago, I was working as a sports agent and Rashad was doing scouting at an event. And that's how we initially connected. And here we are 10 yep. years later, you know, so yep. the information he's, the ideas he's giving you are completely accurate. Yep. Sorry. Who, uh, <laughs> no, you're good. No, I want you to, I want you to keep talking, keep <laughs> flowing off, bouncing off each other like that. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about mentors. I think mentors are extremely important at your age and at your, your development point. Um, do either, do any of you have mentors? No. Kind of, sort of. No, kind of, sort of. Ashley? No? No. That had no mentor? Okay. So, Donnie, why do you have a mentor? It, it's mainly family. Like I, I do a lot of um, stuff with my, my younger brother and my dad and we usually look out for each other and we usually talk about certain things when, you know, say adults trying to make a living in life while you're sure. in college. Sure. No, that's good. I, I would encourage you to start with family if family's right there. But then I would also encourage all three of you to seek outside and try and find those mentors. Um, as crazy as this sounds, again, at my age, I'm 42 years old. My wife and I, before we jumped on this Zoom call, my wife and I were talking about her and I getting life coaches. You know what I mean? Like, you see people all the time, Donnie. You see people out here getting hitting coaches. You know what I mean? That, that picture that, uh, I was going to say Coach Williams, that picture that Calvin showed earlier with my hand around our player after that state championship game, you guys remember that picture he showed earlier? Yes, sir. That kid's a, he's yeah, a senior in high school right now. He's a senior in high school right now, and he's going to Vanderbilt to play baseball next year. Thank but you. that kid has a speed coach, a hitting coach, you know, this, that, and the third. So people are investing in batting coaches. People invest in personal trainers. Actually, people, you want people to come invest in you for you to teach them how to cross over, how to shoot, how to perfect, you know, the jump shot, whatever it may be, the back to the basket game. Why aren't people investing in their personal development and hiring life coaches? I don't get it. I don't understand that. If I want, I want at my age of 42, I want somebody to show me, hey, Rashad, you're 42. Do you know how you're investing your money? Are you investing your money the right way? Is your relationship as, health, as healthy as it can be with your wife? 
or I just I just want to be the best version of me at all times. So I'm still seeking mentors. I'm still trying to trying to better myself. So for you guys, I think it's super important that you guys start to look to just find mentors. Yeah. And see who can sharpen you. your skills and develop you guys more. Does that makes sense. Yes, sir. A little bit, yes. Um, as far as as far as finding those mentors, again, I would I would circle back to LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is always a great start. I would also talk to Calvin and other professors that you have. Maybe talk to past coaches and see if they can point you in the right, in the right direction of people who are doing ultimately what it is that you want to be doing. Because the the thing is like. I think, I want to say this, as for your, at your age, those mentors are extremely important, but then as you get to get a, you know, the next stage in your life and you get to be, you know, out of college now and you're that young professional now, it's not necessarily always called a mentor, but it's now called, like I was saying earlier, a coach, but either way, you want that person who is going to hold you accountable. That's, that's the beauty of those life coaches or those mentors. They're going to hold you accountable. So when I used to have a life coach before, he didn't want to hear that, hey, I, you know, I couldn't get this done because I had to do this and I had to do this. And I was, you know, those are excuses. And that's all part of being intentional and how you move and intentional with, with being just an overall better person. So I would, I would strongly encourage you guys to look at getting mentors as soon as you can. Um, and again, find mentors that are doing what it is that you want to be doing. Can I add a point there, Rashad? That Please do. One, one uh, I can't remember who told me, but I know it's, a, it's been a while. And what they shared with me was that an individual needs three people in their lives at, at one time. A young person, a peer and an older person and you need all three of those individuals that you're in your life at the same time and most individuals only have two of those individuals at any given time you need a older person because they share they're your mentor they share experiences with without the pain of failure so that's what the definition of mentorship is sharing experience without the pain of failure so that's what purpose that they serve in your life. Your peer is your individual that's within your same age bracket and they keep you excited and motivated and, and ready to go. So if I say, hey, Rashad, man, let's jump on this call, man. Let's talk to these students that I got and you share your uh, life story with them and how you got in your position, that hypes him up. And then he can say, hey, let's, uh, let's take a look at doing this again a second time like we talked about earlier. And then that gets me hyped up. And we share that same uh, excitement about it. And that's how we uh, interact as peers. The younger person, you share, uh, you are the older person in their life. So you get to share your experiences and what you failed in. And you serve as the mentor in your life. Yep. The, the key is that most people can only identify two of those three at any given time in your life. You find your purpose and your passion and able to fulfill your life's purpose when you have all three and they're identifiable in your life. That's the point I wanted to make. It's a great point. Great point. Anybody have any feedback off what coach just said? No, sir. Ivory, Ashley? No, sir. Not right now. Let's, let's, let's jump a little bit into some career development stuff. So as we're talking about careers, and, and I know, Donnie, you're not necessarily wanting to be in the sports industry, but we'll, we'll, we'll try, I'll try and cater it and finesse it so it kind of fits in your world also as far as being in the military. Um, but what what are you if you guys are doing anything right now what are you guys doing to kind of help to develop your careers and get you guys going down that career path what is it that you guys are currently doing Ashley, not all at once okay Donnie, i was about much. to say i didn't know donnie was gonna go first it's okay um Me i was wondering where to go <laughs> uh 
I pretty much, I mean, I go to the gym every day. Well, not every day, Monday through Friday. And I got like certain things that I do for myself. Um, and it's not, I invite like friends, but they don't really play basketball. So right now it's just like, a, it's just like weightlifting. So it's weight training. It's not just, it's not basketball, not right now. But actually, here's, here's my thing. Basketball is going to come to an end at some point. I don't know when. Hopefully later than sooner. Why aren't you sharpening those other skills right now? You know what I mean? When you say other skills, what are you pertaining to? So I'm talking about the skills. I'm talking about the skills like what, what books are you reading right now? Like, Are you reading a book that's going to help you become a, a, a skill coach? Are you, are you working with people or are you trying to network with people at your college who are, who are working in your athletic department? Um, yes, I know. <laughs> I just have Mr. Mayors. Um, me and Mr. Mayors were talking and uh, I was supposed to intern with uh, Jay Johnson out of North, uh, North Carolina. But because of the virus, it kind of like messed everything up. So now we have yeah. to like try and work something out. But it's probably not going to be until uh, the next summer or well, this upcoming summer. So Mr. Mayors okay. is our career pathways uh, coordinator, by the way, Rochelle. Got it. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. No, that's good. I, I I'll tell you. Last night I went on and I took. I was watching the uh, the basketball game last night, and. I don't know, at some point when the Lakers started to pull away, I took about 10 minutes and I just started researching your college, your surrounding areas, and then job opportunities that are in the sports industry. And you know what, I take that back, not even job opportunities, but just places where you can go to get experience. You know what I mean? Those, so in that short, in 10 minutes, I found your, your college within the athletic department, Charlotte, which is fairly close, correct? Mm -hmm. So you have, you have the Sparlet, Charlotte Sports Commission, the Charlotte Sports Foundation, obviously the Carolina Panthers, Carolina Hornets, the soccer team, Charlotte FC. You have Charlotte Knights. You have NASCAR. You have University of Charlotte's Athletic Department. You have Johnson C. Smith, Queens College, the CIAA. Um, then you have... Have in South Carolina now it might be a little bit further, but you have the SoCon Conference. You have um, what is I think they call it the SCHSL in South Carolina. Is that your is that your uh, state high school association? High school league, yeah. Yeah. And then you know in North Carolina you have the the NCHSAA, which is the same the same deal. So there's there's so many opportunities to get involved. There's so many opportunities to do internships right now. People are actually, as crazy as it sounds, people are actually looking for interns right now because, because of COVID, so many people have been forced to kind of alter their budgets and lay people off. So you, you're laying people off, but guess what? The workload is still there, but you just lost a lot of your manpower. So a lot of people are looking to hire interns to do this kind of work. So if you guys start reaching out and looking at these opportunities, Jump on LinkedIn, shoot these people emails. Hey, I'm Ivory. Here's what I'm looking to do. Love to sit on, sit down and have, have a call with you, have a Zoom with you, learn about what it is you're doing. How can I get my foot in the door at the Charlotte Sports Commission? How can I get my foot in the door so when the, when the ACC championship is coming up, I'm a volunteer at the ACC championship or the, just the ACC tournament or the ACC of uh, um, – uh, championship, football championship game, ACC baseball tournament. What do I need to do to make sure that I'm on somebody's short list so when they start putting together intern opportunities, internship positions, volunteer opportunities? Like I told you guys, I'm 42 years old. My career is, is pretty stable. I feel pretty good about my career right now. Every single year, I volunteer here in Indianapolis for the Big Ten championship game. Every single year. Don't really have to anymore, but you know what? At some point, I might want to go work at the Big Ten office, which is in Chicago. And the more I keep volunteering for this game, I'm like, man, this guy Rashad comes back every year. Same role, 
not not the best role. I mean, I'm down on the field. It's fine, all that good stuff. But I'm doing it with aspirations of one day potentially working in the Big Ten uh, in their conference office. So start looking for those types of opportunities where you guys can start to volunteer because you want to start to build your resume. Does that make sense? We're, it's all about building the resume. Let me, let, me, let me hit you with this. So, and I feel like I'm starting to do too much talking. So I, I really, really want you guys to ask questions. Like I'm begging you, Ivory, you owe me about five questions. Yeah, you need I've to jump on. You need to, get Ivory. To zero. you need to get I'm, Ivory. I'm a getter. So let me, let me hit you guys with something, okay? <laughs> so I transitioned into the sports industry in 2010. My first job, second job kind of, I was an intern at the NCAA headquarters here in Indianapolis, okay? 2010. In my intern class, there were 18 of us, okay? 18 of us. There was over 2,500 people that applied for that internship, okay? Over 2,500 that applied for that internship. You know what separated the, the, those who got, those 18 of us who got it versus the other, however many, I'm not gonna do that math right now that didn't get it? Resumes and presentation, okay? Resumes and presentation. My situation was a little bit different because I was a little bit older and it was kind of a career change for me, but I'm going to speak to the other 17 people in my intern class right now. Okay. Just to give you guys some perspective of the competition out here. Okay. So out of the 18 people, they, and I'm, and I'm not trying to discourage you, but I just want to show you guys what this, this, this is real out here. Okay. This, this is real. So the other 17 people, while they were an undergrad like yourself, they all worked in their college athletic department for four years, okay? Four years working in their athletic department. From there, they either went on and got a master's degree and or a law degree, okay? So you're talking about four years, then you leave that school, you go work at another school, you get a master's degree for two years. So now you have six years on your resume of working in the sports industry, two colleges and two degrees, okay? On top of that, out of the 18, if you take me away, the 17 others, nine of them had law degrees, okay? Law school, I wanna say is three years. So you're talking about, you're talking about young professionals like yourself that have nine years, nine years of work experience three different colleges on there. And some of them also were, were student athletes at their colleges too, by the way. So being a student athlete is not gonna really separate you. I had to learn that the hard way. But when I looked at some of these young people, I'm sitting back like, wow, I was just honored to be in their presence. These, young, these people had nine years of experience and they're applying for internships. Okay, that's how competitive this industry is. Before you guys got on, I was talking to Mr. Williams and I said, Mr. Williams, I said, coach, I, I call everybody coach. I said, coach, I think it would be a phenomenal idea if you bring on a young professional. I have a young guy who I mentor. I don't know if I'm a bad mentor or something's going on with him and I, but this guy's having a heck of a time getting a full-time job right now, okay? He is two years out of undergrad, okay? Two years out of undergrad on his resume, he had an internship with the Kansas City Chiefs, internship with the Cleveland Browns, internship at USA Football, internship with a minor league hockey team in North Carolina, and he's, he's done a bunch of other stuff also, you know, YMCA, that, some of that type stuff also. Having a heck of a time, still to this day does not have a full-time job because of how competitive the sports industry is and how hard it is to get these jobs. So what I want you guys to, to take away, and I know we only have five minutes left and maybe we can go longer, I don't know. What I want you guys to understand is just being a thousand point scorer or whatever, you know, whatever you're thinking it may be, that's, it's not gonna be good enough if we're, be, if we're being 100% transparent. That resume is gonna have to knock people down and your, your quality of work, your experiences, your, your touches that you have, that's what's gonna get people's attention. Yes, makes sense? Ivory. Yeah, if I can touch on that also, it's how you, do, 
how you differentiate yourself. So yes. um, that's what, oh, well, we got Ivory talking. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> got to capitalize on that. Yeah, we got to capitalize on this opportunity. Yes. I, Ivory, t talk to me a little bit about your, your short and long-term goals. What is it that you want to do? Uh, I want to um, finish school, get my bachelor's, then I want to go back to get my master's. Good. That's great. You, career wise, what what in, do you want to be in the um, sports industry or do you want to be in another industry? I want to be in the sports industry, but I don't know. Hey, I haven't been really getting no internship, so it's gonna be hard for me to try to find a job in my um my degree um when I graduate, and I ain't trying to you know set wait forever for no job in my major i understand no i understand that and that's and that's and that's real and everybody's situation is a little bit different you know what i mean some people have that have that flexibility some people don't have that flexibility but what i would say to you though ivory is make sure that you are putting yourself in the best possible position right now to be successful what year are you i'm a junior you're a junior so that when you graduate in two years that you, you can select the job that it is that you want, or that when you graduate, you're at least gonna put yourself on the right path. Because what, what frustrates me, and I know frustrates other people also, is when I see, I see some of my former players, you go to college, you graduate from college, and you're not doing what makes you happy. Or I, I've seen some of my players, they graduate from college, and they're working a blue collar job, but I'm like, what are you doing, bro? You just spent, you have you spent all this money on college and you're working a job that you don't even need that requires a college degree and i don't want to see any any three of you fall in that category i want i want to see you guys doing what makes you happy in two and three years from now but it starts right now with your preparation and your discipline and what you choose to do to put to separate yourself from the competition you know so i like i, I always donnie and and you know, all you guys, Ashley, Ivory, I don't know if you guys have been around sports. I tell my players all the time, hey, listen, we, we can't win on Friday and Saturdays if we don't win in practice first. It's not going to happen. You have to learn how to win every single day, Monday through Friday, before you can win on Saturday. You have to know how to win Monday through Thursday before you can win on Friday nights. And if you're not winning Monday through Thursday, hey, we're not going to win on Friday night. It's, it's that simple. If you're not an athlete, guess what? Every single day is practice. Every day is practice. When, you, when your feet hit the ground, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, whatever it is, you gotta have that mindset that you're an underdog and you have to do what it takes to separate yourself from everybody else in your class, everybody else in Coach Williams' class, everybody else in your grade, in your, in, you know, it's a junior, it's a sophomore, everybody who's in that sport management program, you gotta be the best one. You got to figure out how, what, what do I, do I, does that mean I got to wake up at 4.30? You know, when, when the baby's still asleep and my son's still asleep, does that mean I got to stay up until one or two o'clock? But put the work in now. You guys are young. Put the work in now so that, so when you get older, you can pick and choose what you want to do and not have people forcing you and telling you what to do. And that's, yes? Makes that's sense? a great point. That's a great point in itself that, uh, like Rash like Rashad, uh, I sold potato chips until I was 30 years old. I sold potato chips and I absolutely hated that job. Uh, I didn't realize that I, I dropped out of school. I don't know if I ever told you that Rashad, I dropped out of school. I didn't know that. Yeah, I dropped out and decided I was going to go to work and sold potato chips and I hated the job. And I did that for several years until, uh, I decided that I wanted to excel in at education. So uh, when I went back, I understood the principles of what Rashad is telling you right now, how to differentiate yourself that first one in, last one out. I was asking questions of professors. I was trying to make sure that the assignments that I turned in were a lot different and more detailed than the other students. And this is the point that I try to make to you all that uh, I may be a resource to you when you graduate. You have another resource that you've been introduced to tonight. So what are you doing in order to differentiate yourself as a student 
and then cultivating these relationships, as Rashad mentioned earlier, um, as you progress, because he's helping a young man right now look for a career that could potentially be you now that you've had this introduction made. So always, uh, always differentiate yourself and cultivate the relationships. Several of the points that Rashad has made tonight. And, and here, here's the thing I didn't tell you guys also that I really, I'm probably the proudest of and something that I fight for the most. I, I, when I go to work every day, um, one of the proudest things that I, that I get to say that I do is that I run the internship program at USA Football. And I, I don't know if you guys can hear the passion when I talk. I don't know if it's the coach and me coming out, but I hope you guys can hear my passion for coaching and working with young people. Like doing this, I love doing what we're doing right now. This is my thing. This is, this is, this is my it right here. So the fact that I get to go to work and be the internship coordinator at USA Football, like that's all I need. Like I'm good. And because I'm old and because I've had so many jobs and experiences, like, like Mr. Williams said, I know a heck of a lot of people out there in the sports industry. I know a ton of people and I love, I love working with our interns and I, and I put them through the grinder. They don't, they don't get no layups on me, on me, Ashley, no layups. They got to come correct. They got to come hard. You know what I mean? And by the time they leave that internship, I know that they're ready to hit the real world. I know that they're ready to go. And not until they leave that internship will I sign off on them and recommend it. I'm not putting my name on you. If you're BS because if you BS <laughs> and I sign off on you. Guess what that means? My reputation is on the line too now, and I'm, I'm not signing off on no BS. So I love to work with these young professionals, get them ready for the real world, and then, hey, Ashley, you wanna do this? Boom, I got a guy, call him up. I got a girl, call her up. I gotta connect here, I gotta connect there. Oh, you trying to go do this? Boom, call my guy. I, I do that for so many people. And I'll tell you one thing too, Calvin, you had a great point which you said earlier, the reason I, as far as wanting to and, and looking to help young people, because when I was your age, I never had that mentor. I've, I've never really had anybody to help show me the way or guide me, Rashad, you're doing it wrong. Do it this way. Rashad, try this. Rashad, read that book. And I want the first 50 pages read in three days. Rashad, I've never had that. So I try and do that and be that for everybody else. So they don't have to go through the ups and downs and the, the pivots and the, and the failures that I went through. Yep. Ivory, your hand should have, you should have started cutting backflips when Rashad said that he was in, directly involved with the internship program at USA Football, which you just said earlier about not being able to land the internship. You should have started cutting backflips and saying, well, how can I connect with you further after this call is over with? Well, what he said. Huh? He said that he What was you said, how can I connect further? <laughs> you and I you and I gotta hop on the call and, and just you know chop things down. See what we can do to help see what I can do to help you and get you going in the right direction. Okay. So do you like want me to stay behind after? What I'm gonna I tell do you, is, I tell, um, I'll tell you what, let me let me uh get you all connected on LinkedIn, Ivory. He's uh Rashad is, is on LinkedIn. Um, Where are you just sending that in the chat? No, I did oh. you just send it uh, three sixty. No, I, I can send I can send my information if you want. What that is right now, so Calvin, I'll let you work on that. Um, what I just sent there, if you click on that, Ashley, talking to you. Okay. That is okay. a part time job of mine. That's my little side hustle right there, where I bring an extra $1,000 um, a month, basically. And it's a basketball training facility, okay? Mm -hmm. And it is all virtual reality, all technology driven. It's basketball like you've never seen it before. I promise you, I'm a basketball guy. All my sweat equity is in football, but I've been, I've been a basketball guy for forever. Um, everything that they do, uh, we do at Shoot360 is all virtual reality. So you're talking about NBA trainers, college, Division One trainers, players. 
They all come in there to train. I see them all the time. I mean, I'm actually in the process of trying to open up one of my own companies, a shoot 360 like that. So look at that, check that out. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know, we can talk further about that. See that? Yes, I'm looking at it. Okay, Donnie. Yes, sir. I've gotten to know quite a few people in the baseball industry because the young man who was in that picture that I showed you guys earlier, that's, that's, my, that's my guy. He was, he, he was my, one of my running backs and I've worked very closely with him just with all of his aspirations in football and in baseball. So he's going to Vanderbilt to play baseball next year. Um, Donnie, I'm sure you know, Calvin, I'm sure you know, but Vanderbilt baseball is like Alabama football. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't get any better than that. Um, but in doing so, I've gotten to know a lot of good people in the baseball industry. So I have some connections that I can also get you plugged in with some there's this one company, it's called S2 Cognition. I'm about to go look. I'll link over for you. And Donnie, um, um, the reason that he's introducing this is because even when you decide, I don't know if your career, if you're career, career minded as far as uh, going into the military, whether you're going to do four years, eight years, or 20 years, you still have to think about what you're going to do afterwards. So um, are you going to be a private contractor for the military after, or will you want to go back into the sports field, the sports industry? If that's the case, start making your connections now and cultivate them throughout your military background and your military career. Sir, you're breaking up. Uh, could you not hear me? Anything I said? I heard you clear on this end. It might be his reception. Okay. In summary, I just said um, whether or not you plan on having a full career in the military, four, eight, 12, 20 years, however that breaks down, start cultivating your relationships now if you are considering uh, a sports-based industry after you retire from the military. So start making those relationships and building that network now. Yes, sir. And I... Military is just because, one, I feel like it's a good opportunity. Two, I want to serve my country. But I do also want to go help coach the younger generation of baseball to help build the sport up right. There you go. So th that would be definitely uh, very important for you to start, you know, reaching out to like-minded individuals and sharing that thought that you want to you wanna help in the future. And uh, – building some relationships so that they can lead you in the right direction or is that your number yes that is coach Rashad right there okay all right we got about a couple of minutes left did anybody have any questions that they want to ask directly This, don't don't get quiet now, and this is an opportunity for you. Like I said, I'm here to help all you guys. So, any way I can help, I mean, I don't. I can talk about my story, but you know, my story is boring. Like I want to, I want to get you guys where I want to get you wherever it is you want to be at. That's what I want to do. So I, I'll ask a question then, Rashad. Let, Mm -hmm. When I met you back in 2011 yep. to now 2020, yep. what, what have you found to be the most important thing that you've learned during that time frame in those 10 years in advancing your career from uh, the scouting days to now? Sure. So what I, I, had, I had this whole jotted down like little presentation I was going to give you guys. But because it's only three of you guys, and I'm actually I'm glad it was it was small because I like to get personal with you guys. There's there's two quotes that I really try and live by, and they're I'm in my wife's office right now, so you can't see them, but I have them both in my office downstairs. I have them in my cube at work. The first quote is very simple: 
you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? That, that's, that's an obvious, I think it speaks for itself. The second quote is another one from Michael Jordan. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost over 300 games in my career. 26 times my team has trusted me to make the game winning shot and I've missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. That's why I'm successful. That, that right there will probably be on my headstone when I, when I pass because to me, life is gonna knock you down. You, and you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone early and often in your career to get wherever it is you wanna get to. And guess what, when you step out of that comfort zone, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna fail and you're gonna fail a lot. And it's okay to fail because you're stepping out of that comfort zone and through failure, you begin to learn, okay? That's when you start really learning and honing in on who am I? What am I, what am I about? What makes me tick? How do I avoid failing again? What's gonna make me not fail next time? So for me to answer your question, Coach, directly, can I curse? Uh, let's oh, ask them that. Are, are, are we in an environment where it's just us and nobody takes offense to being real? It's fine by me. It's fine by Ivory. I just Ashley. Yeah, that's fine. Donnie. Donnie, you good? I'm good. Go ahead. We're just, look, we're all <laughs> adults. It don't matter. There we go. Good. All right. For, for me, it's all about just not having that I don't give a shit mindset. I don't care who's in front of me, what's in front of me, what the obstacle is, how big. I don't care how small it is. I don't care if it's just the three of you on this call. You're going to get 100% of me. And once you get that mindset and you get locked in, nothing can stop you. Nothing can, if that means I got to get up at 4.30 in the morning, I'll get up at 4.15 in the morning. I don't care. If I got to stay up to 1 in the morning, I'll stay up to 1.30 to make sure it's better than what you thought it was going to be. Having that mindset and attacking every single thing that you do is really what changed me when, I, when we first met Calvin, when I was a scout, to where I am now. Because now, when I walk into a room, I, I want to be... I, I, I try to be the most prepared person in the room. And if I'm not, I'm still going to ask questions. I like for you guys, I'm going to ask questions a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to probably answer questions in meetings. And guess what? I'm going to probably answer a lot of the questions, with the wrong answer, but I don't care because with that wrong answer, I'm going to find out the right answer and I'm going to get better. And I'm going to have the confidence to know, I don't care what you, you, you or anybody thinks. And that's when you start to, to develop that mindset, you just, you just start to roll. And I'll tell you, Donnie, for me, I listen to a lot of podcasts by Jocko. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Jocko Willick. No, sir. And if, you got to look up Jocko. He has, a, he has an incredible book, incredible book out podcast called Extreme Ownership. But he's, oh. he's like one of the highest regarded Navy SEALs out there. Jocko Willick. He's on Twitter. He's, I mean, his stuff is powerful. So you keep that in mind, especially uh, with your uh, future interest, Donnie, for sure. Yes, sir. All right, we need to wrap up here. We're approaching that eight o'clock hour and I think Zoom is gonna cut us short here. So <laughs> let's make sure that we stay. Uh, everybody make sure that you connect with with Rashad, Coach Rashad here. Um, man, I appreciate the time tonight. You you blew my mind away. I'm sure you blew theirs away as well. And for all the information that you shared, um, I learned a lot. So <laughs> uh, everybody, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just I just want to be here to help to help you guys and be a support and anything I can do to help further you guys as as people. You know, it's it's that's what it's all about. Just iron sharpening iron. And I hope, Coach, I hope you have me back. Like I said, I'm going to bring my young guy on with me also and let him talk because I'm an old guy hearing from a younger person, a young professional might give you guys a, a greater perspective on the industry also. But you guys have my contact. You know, don't hesitate to reach out.
That's the only thing that I disliked that you said tonight was that you're an old guy because we're <laughs> we're in the same age bracket. So I don't. That's the only thing I don't like that you said tonight. All right, Rashad, <laughs> man, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna make sure that everyone has your contact information if they weren't on here tonight. Um, yeah, man, we'll, we'll definitely link up again and get a chance to do this again. And, uh, Sounds good. And I'll, I'll know by the turnout if you guys were like, yo, when that guy comes back on, you guys got to be on there. I'll know. <laughs> I, if I get back on, there's not a big turnout. That means you got you three didn't like it. So I'll know. <laughs> And then we'll have, and then if, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. <laughs> mhm, mm mhm. Mm All right, again, Rashad. Thanks for the time tonight, man. You have a good, in All rest good, of man. Your evening. Thanks, man. You guys have a good night. It's great talking to you guys. You too. Thank you. Good night. You.